The word of God brought to you by Jesus Sheta YouTube channel and as inspired by the spirit of Jesus. The word of today, this time, this hour, this moment, this season, this time is about important of knowing. Important of knowing. Why should we know? Knowing. Why should we know? They say living long life make us know when you live long life you know much and they say experience is the best teacher experience the best teacher so those people who live or have lived long life they have experience so they know much in my language it's there there's a proverb that say an old man sitting on a chair can see far than a small boy sitting on top of a tree why because the man old man know much so a young man can come with a lot of hot advice but old man can see because he has seen before such things and have know how everything gonna go based on experience going through issue or going through something or doing something make us know when you go through problem you know uh, uh, for example, at work, when you go through issues at work, issues at job, when you go through hardship, trials, and tribulation, it makes us know the Bible says in James 1, verse 2 to 4, when you go through problem, they make you grow and mature. Common man say, hardship, problem, adversity are opportunity for us to know. Hardship are opportunity to enable us to, ha to have new learning. Life problem enable us to know. Life problem, that's common man say, life problem enable us to know and to have a coping skill and give us ability to know and learn new things. God say in James 1 verse 2 to 4, problem in life, we should be happy when we go through them because they are the stepping stone of growth. They are the growth um uh rather we know if they are the 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 way we learn and mature through problem and a hardship during tribunal only people who are experienced are chosen to case through tribunal because they know much they have gone through a lot in life they were in charge of like uh institution university high school they were principal of high school they were head of uh of university even when you go to pay dory buying a woman for marriage they you choose old men with gray hair to go and talk proverb to the to the panel so you can be given a lady for marriage because these people have no no have a lot of knowledge we are saying what is the important of knowing why should we know before jesus call any mighty man of god into into work of his ministry before you are called to work for god kingdom jesus allow you to go through a pathway of knowing through hardship and trials if you see every powerful minister anointed one we are talking about real true and real anointed man of god when you hear him speak or you hear her speak they say, I went through desert life before they were called for ministry. God allow us to know before he called us for ministry. Naked truth make us know. That's why the Bible say in John 8, 32, it is when you know you are free from being cheated. It's when you know that you are free to win. It's when you know you are able to succeed. Is when you know the law of the land, you are free from being entangled by the law. It is when you know why you are doing what you are doing, you succeed. It's when you know why you are in school, 
that make you do homework, love the teacher, and commit yourself to what the teacher is teaching and what you are expected to know. The Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, many people are lost because they don't know. Many people fail in life because they don't know. Hosea 4, 6, many people are cheated because they don't know. Many people have failed in their marriage, in, their, in school. Many people have failed in their career because they don't know. Many people have failed in Christianity because they don't know why they are saved. Some people say, I'm saved to get money, to pray for money. I'm saved to get a good girl for marriage. I'm saved to get a good man in marriage. There are no good women outside there. So I have to go and pretend I'm a Christian and I see a good girl from the church choir and I marry her. So when you marry, then marriage, the salvation come to an end because you believe salvation is going to church to get a good woman. When you know you are free, Many people say salvation is playing to get money. So when you go to America, which is a rich nation, when you go to super rich nation like Sweden, Denmark, the super rich nation of Sweden, you say there is no God because you are saved because of money and now you have money. Because Mother and Mary, John chapter 11, they thought that they did not know God can resurrect somebody. When their brother died, they did not believe that Jesus can affect their brother. And that's why Jesus wept and cried, John 11, 35, because they couldn't believe. They had no knowledge that God, God built human understanding. Isaiah 55, 9 to 12. Isaiah 55, 9 to 12. Luke 1, 37. God can do undoable. God, God built human understanding god our god our jesus god beyond human expectation that's why he is, he could not let daniel be eaten by lions beyond human expectation there is no you can be put in the lions desk and be eaten by lions the religious were put on the fire but they were not bad god power is unlimited it's because of not knowing many people are fearing Christianity because they thought they limited the power and the salvation of God to needs, to marriage, marrying a good man in church. They limited God to go to having money. So when they get to reach in their country or when they go to rich nation, you wonder this person was a church chairman. He was the head of the youth. He was the head of the intercessor. He was the head of the prayers. But when he got to Sweden and went to Denmark, he no longer believed in God. He's just a freedom Christian because they don't know. They thought marriage, a Christianity, marriage, a salvation is just having money, praying to get money, praying to have. They don't know we are saved to go to heaven. We are saved to live holy. We will be counted were they to enter the kingdom of God. Many people fail even in salvation, we are saying, because they don't know. Jesus said in John 8, 32, that when you know, you'll be free to win the battle of Christianity. You'll be free from being cheated. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 9, that Satan cheated not one person, not a thousand. Satan cheated the whole world. Why? Because they don't know. And the Bible says, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and many Bible verses, many will not know. Why? Because of doing evil. That is, when you do right, you see. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse 1, that God does, you don't see God. God cannot see you because of sinning. It is when you live holy, you see. It's when you live holy, you know. It's when you live holy, you can see. It's because Daniel was living holy, could read the writing on the wall. It's because Elijah was living holy and, and seeking God, he could see people are worshipping internet, people are worshipping pornography, people are worshipping Facebook, people are worshipping TikTok, people are worshipping bad God. It's because of knowing a living holy, seeking God 24-7, Nehemiah could see the broken wall of Jerusalem. And he cried and fasted, and not only prayed and fasted, but built the wall. It's because of knowing and living holy, seeking God. Ezekiel could see dry bones, the valley of dry bones, Ezekiel that seven. It's because of knowing and living holy and seeking God. We are saying Proverbs 9, 10 is when you live holy, 
When you seek God, when you have genuine thirst for righteousness, you see Nehemiah, Ezekiel could see the dry bone. The desolated Israel, the lost Israel, they were like dry bones. Hope was taken. They were cut off from God. The Bible says Isaiah 51, the church of God was cut from God. Isaiah 51 verse 1 to 2. You women of God, you want to live holy, but you have been cut off from your father you belong, from the rock where you belong. Church of God will be cut off. Her. That's why Jesus will bring restoration back to them. Isaiah 44. And Jerusalem will be restored to the former place of ruin because they, the enemy will try to steal them from God. Isaiah 51 say they were cut off from the rock they belong. The woman was cut off. It is because Ezekiel was praying could see the broken the dry bones, they were Israel that were made dry without the word of God. The Bible says in Matthew 24, Luke 21, when the enemy see the revival coming, the anointing, he will try to attack it. The fig tree getting greens, leaves, anointing, revival, restoration. The enemy will try to make it dry, like just like the dry bone. That's why there is restoration coming, revival. There is no way there can be restoration if there was no um, removal of rest the, the, the store and they um, there must have been uh, the take off take away of of hope restoration cannot come until there is something that was stolen or taken away restoration is coming back to where you were Isaiah 51 Isaiah 51 verse 2 1 to 2 the, the woman was taken cut off from where you belong so the restoration will come back because God must the Bible say in Isaiah 35, 10, the redeem of, God, of the Lord must be ransom. Will be redeemed. Also Habakkuk 2, 3. We are talking about important of knowing. It's because of not knowing, the Bible says in Revelation 12, 9, many will be deceived that Satan cheated the whole world. Jesus, our main focus of the reading is Hebrews 12 verse 2 it says for the joy set verse 2 be I think verse 2 be for the joy set before Jesus he endured the cross scorning his shame and sat at the right hand of the throne of God verse 3 consider him who endured consider Jesus who has endured such a great opposition from sinner so that you do not grow weary and lose hope Hebrews 12 12, 2 to 3, NIV, Bible 2011, we have read that it's because Jesus knew I am being attacked by everyone. I'm being left by all my people. I'm being crucified. I'm being attacked. I'm being crucified. They are saving a criminal, Barnabas, and they want to crucify me. They want to kill me. They are annoying me. They are scoffing. They are trying. The enemy is trying by all means. What does it mean for the joy set before Jesus? Hebrews 12 2, for the joy set before Jesus. What does it mean? That made him endure the cross. What is this joy? What is this happiness? What is this knowledge that Jesus had? What did Jesus know? What, what For there is something coming. He knew there is something. We are saying the importance of knowing. What is the importance of knowing? It is when you know the law of the land, you are not entangled by the law. When you start the re reading of this chapter, Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Since we are surrounded by great witness of people, let us put away everything that easily fail us. Sin that easily fail us. When you read Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21, it says things that will make us not go to heaven. When you get rid of them, it's saying, will make also those who are looking at us to worship God. It is knowing things that can easily fail us or fail even others. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 12 to 13, that let us not fail those who are our Timothy. They have been called cripples. Let us make our hand, our eyes, our every element of our body straight so also the cripple don't fall. Cripples are people who see us as their own model. So, what is this joy that was said before Jesus that made him to persevere, to endure, that everyone opposed him? 
Everyone said, no, this is a fake messiah. In fact, Judge Matthew 24, so in fact, in a matter of fact, Matthew 27, say, they were saying, Jesus is spreading the worst deception, the worst cheating that have ever been had since the beginning of the world. Since the world was created, Jesus was spreading the worst gospel that was fake. Why did Jesus endure such scorning? Nailing on the cross, tortured, death. What is this joy was said before Jesus? Jesus knew that it's because Satan knew that soon after three days as it will prophesy, I'll be the God of all gods. I'll be the God of these people killing me. I'll be the King of Kings. Revelation 19, 16. The right of the white horse. Revelation 19, 16. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'll be the kings of all kings. God of all gods. Magicians, they want to say they are our gods. Jesus is above, of, is above them. He say he is the Lord of Lords. They are lords. Magicians, they say they are lords of this world. Wise people, like those who are killing Daniel, they are saying they are the God of this world. People say to Joseph, Saint Joseph, we are the one who, may, who, who, who matter. We are the one who determine in Jacob's family. We are the one in charge. Joseph brothers, Genesis 37, they were putting and erecting themselves and sitting as gods of Joseph, as lords of Joseph, as determinants of Joseph, Saint Joseph's life. But Jesus knew I am the gods of them. I'm the Lord of Lords. I'm the Lord of this Joseph brother saying, we are the Lords of you, Joseph. You cannot deem. They were speaking to God. When they say, Joseph, you can't dream again. They were not telling Joseph. They were telling who was Lord over them, who is Jesus, who is sovereign over them. God cannot be mocked. No can be changed. James 1 17. You cannot change God. Isaiah 55. God is unchangeable. His word must happen. What he said. Jesus knew I will be above. I am the God. I came out like a godly man to break the hard heart. That the ones who say there is no God. It is Jesus knew I am the God of gods. I will be the king of kings. That he endured. So we are saying it is because Jesus knew he endured. It is because when you know, you win. It's because when you know, you don't be depressed when you are being attacked. It's when you know, you don't be living in mental sickness no, no, by seeing everyone is on you. Everyone is on your toe. Everyone is attacking you. Everyone is speaking about you. Jesus, uh, consider Jesus. Uh, Hebrews 12, 3. Consider Jesus. Everyone said no. Everyone, tick X. Everyone voted out Jesus. The Bible is saying, Hebrews 12, 3, consider Jesus who was opposed by everyone. Even disciple took off. And Jesus said, this very night I'll be cut off from my people. Trust them. But it was prophesied that that is a counterfeit screen. After three days, the, the victory, the gospel will start, the firing. Unstoppable gospel. It is because when you know why that the blueprint to go to heaven is full of attack. Jesus said, Oh, you will face many trouble when you live holy. When you want to live holy, when you want to follow the right way, you'll be attacked. It's this blueprint, it's this knowledge of the truth that will make you keep going. That you not give up knowing this is prophetic. This is the blueprint. This is the ultimate highway to heaven. This is the ultimate highway spoken. Isaiah 35 10. The highway of holiness. Matthew Ruther King said, blueprint of life. I want to tell you, year 12, you're speaking to year 12 in America. I want to tell you the blueprint of life. That the blueprint of life. That the nature of life. If you want to succeed in life, you must know your goal. Jesus had a goal. Hebrews 12, 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. He knew. Go to be king of king. Martin Luther King was saying that he was telling graduates in America, he had 12, uh, 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 that when you know that in life you need to make a clear goal and focus on them 
And if, if you suffer, you go through difficulty, you must never stop working toward your goal. Even if it means crawling like a baby, you must keep moving. He told them, if you cannot go into the air like a bird, if you can fly like a bird, run. If you can run, walk. If you can walk, crawl like a baby, but never put down your goal. Keep to your focus. Keep to your target. So the blueprint to heaven is full of attack. The Bible say in Luke 21, Matthew 24, the Israel will be surrounded. They will be stepped on by non-believers. They have been called Gentiles. They will be surrounded. The enemy will try to desolate them. The enemy will try to steal the power of God out of them. The enemy will try to desolate them by all means. By attacking their marriage, attacking their ministry, attacking their family, attacking either to work, attacking by all means sir, to try to discourage them. And in the Bible, it has been called abomination of desolation. Desolate is to make unlivable, unlivable of the word of God, to make you out of the power of God, to remove the power of God out of you. The need to live holy, dry, desolate is a place unlivable, a place that has no real life. Dry bone in Ezekiel that seven had no life. They were desolated. They were made dry without the word of God. The Bible says in Daniel 12, the enemy through the and the people of darkness will break the power of the other people to try to discourage them. Because of the joy set before them, because of the heaven set before them, because of the holiness, because of the revival that is coming. If it is you know when you have been called to ministry, when you have been anointed, when you have the light, you'll be attacked. Woman in Revelation 12 had light. He was light, full of lights of heaven in the body. Moon in her, on her feet. Star on her head. Twelve stars on her head. Sun, which give light on her, her clothes was sun. But the enemy stood behind the woman in Revelation 12 with the church of God to try to steal the male child that was about to be born, which is the anointing, which is the calling, which is the holiness, which is the restoration. Jesus was also the woman. Mary was also the woman in Revelation 12. The enemy wanted to steal Jesus. The moment is he's born, through King Herod wanted to kill the Mary child. Mary was the woman in Revelation 12. The enemy wanted to steal Jesus, wanted to steal the Mary child Jesus. The moment is born. They went to hide in Egypt. Jesus was born in a, in a cow where, where the cow eat. They were hiding Jesus because the enemy wanted to steal Jesus. Knowing, knowing the future king. You want to attack, I want to kill all the miracle. And the history must repeat. When the church of God is about to be restored, Revelation 12, the enemy will stand be in front of the woman, in front of the church, about to get revival, the corn to steal. The miracle is when Joseph was called to ministry, he was sold to Egypt. He was sold out to the slave land. Moses, future potential under attack, and the mother of Moses had to hide Moses in the river. The Mary child is under attack every time. Somewhere when he was about to be born, the more Karyopenina came. Annoying Hannah, you never get a baby. Husband don't like women without children. When Samuel, the marriage was about to be born. The Bible says in the last day they will mock, they will scoff. Penina are coming back. What is the importance of knowing? It's when you know you win in your Christian battle. So, as we finish this message, we say, let's apply a real life example apart from salvation. Many end up in long marriages for not knowing what marriage entails and important of waiting until you get spouse ordained for you for them number two quick decision many people make quick decision to marry not knowing the danger of marrying people who are not meant for them they make quick decision to marry and end up marrying people who want to marry them for other reason other than biblical way or light way for companionship. Somebody to walk the walk of life together. Somebody, somebody, you need somebody to talk the talk of life together. You negotiate corner together. You learn the same goal. Somebody, 
who let you become what God created you to be. Somebody who wanna hook to you for genuine reason. Many people, because they don't know, especially those who have no experience, we start by saying experience the best teacher. Many people have ended up regretting and fearing their in salvation. Because the enemy, if you don't pray, he will hook you to someone who will fear your Christianity. The idea is not marriage, but it's to wait when marriage is rooted to fear you so you also start smoking, doing morality, drinking, living mental sickness because you are cheated and taken for a ride in marriage. If people know can wait and pray and fast until they get the right spouse, who, if you are a preacher, you preach together. If you're a businessman, you do business together. If you're a soccer player, he let you to play the soccer. If you're a motivation speaker, he let you do it. When the children come, you look at the children together. You pray together. You pray to Jesus together. You fellowship at night together as a family. A family that stay together, pray together. A family of God live together, pray together. You go out on Friday together. You eat dinner together. You go on Friday together. You visit family together. You go to to birthday of children together. You visit friends together. You go to church together. You sit in the church seat together. You go to family gathering together. You go to, to comfort those who are under problem together. You live together. We wake up at night and talk issue together. You reason together. The Bible says two people cannot work together unless they agree. If you don't pray, if you don't know the truth, that you need someone who you will agree together. That there is only one person in the whole world who can hook to you for genuine reason. But if you rush, you marry people who want to marry you to go to Australia, to go to Canada. People want to marry you for children. They want to marry you because you have money. They want to marry you because you have a speech. They don't want to for genuine reason. Or people who don't know. Others are genuine want to get married. But they don't know what marriage is. Some people that we are saying Hosea 4 6. People are lost. People fear in marriage. People fear at work. People fear in life because they don't know. You marry people who don't know. They hold long knowledge of the truth. If you don't pray, if you don't know the truth, then you need to pray and pray and pray till you get somebody who understands what marriage is. Some people are honest, genuine, but interpreting marriage in the long way. Marriage is children. Marriage is getting children. No, my children are part of marriage. They are product of marriage, but marriage is not about children. Marriage is not a pin by children. Marriage is a pin by companionship, living together. And for genuine listen, somebody for you, you are better half. Uh, children are a product of marriage. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't pray, you rush to marry. You marry wrong people who don't know or that knowledge. What is marriage? Marriage uh, is marrying somebody rich. Marriage is having, help marrying someone to help me achieve my life goal. It is not correct. So we are saying as we finish, why have people fear in life? Why do people commit suicide? Why do people commit suicide? For example, your marriage fail. You are taken for a ride in marriage. You decide, I can't live anymore. I just kill myself. This person cheated in marriage. I will kill the children and kill uh, the whole family. I will kill myself and kill the child. These are things we, things we see daily. In the TV. I saw an example in Kenya last year. And in Australia again. I've seen many areas. People killing their children and kill themselves. If you know the truth. You not kill the children. You not kill yourself. You not commit suicide. And because people don't know. Have ended up killing their loved one. They are ended up in life in prison. Because they don't know. Well, we are saying you can be cheated in marriage. You can be cheated in business. You can be cheated in friendship. Also, lack of knowledge that that problem help you grow and mature. The problem is a way to get new learning. Problem where somebody cheated you 
Why something came to you that you didn't expect? It's a new way to learn, new way of doing this. It's a new way to mature. It's a new way to grow and mature. Look at Joseph. Why God did not want him to be sold to slavery? Why his father did not want Joseph to be God to slavery in Egypt? Why Joseph himself did not go to, to be a slave in Egypt? But it worked for his good. It was a new running. He withstood the trials in the fallen land. Where he was falsely accused and sold to enemy of God and people who made him slave. He became second in command in Egypt because of his excellency in, in skill of God. He was made the second in command. So Joseph, we can say he focused on what the Bible say in uh, Romans 12, 6 to 8, 1 Corinthians 12, that when we focus on our gift, area of our gifting, Taryn, we have fulfilling life. We have happy life. We keep going no matter what is we are going through. That um, a professor of, of happiness called Martin Seligman from USA, a professor of mental health, he said that it is when you work in where you are talented in that you live happy. It's not marrying. It's not your marriage work will make you happy. It's not having rich that make you happy. That's why you see rich people, they are not happy. They want to be, they are fighting for leadership. Celebrities are not happy. They are taking drugs until they die. They intoxicate themselves until they die. Celebrity marriage keep breaking and breaking. They are not happy. That professor of happiness in America called um, Professor Martin Seligman said that it is when you work in the area you are talented in. It's when you know your strength. It's when you know your strength. He calls them signature strength. And work on them. Study those career. Work in those career. You have happiness. You have real happiness. That real happiness does not come from your spouse, from your children, from money, from going to America or Sweden or Norway or any country that is rich, but it is focusing and building people on your YouTube channel using your gift. Building people in the community with your gift. It gives you happiness even when things don't work in your way. Also, Miles Molo, late Miles Molo, Bishop, uh, Pastor Miles Molo, the late Miles Molo was saying, it is work. Work, no one can suck you, remove out of work. Job is when you work in any career you want. But work comes from God. Work is a gift. Work is a talent. A talent, no one can remove it out of you. If you, you are a motivator, you keep motivating in YouTube, in Facebook, everywhere. If you are a pianist, if you are a guitarist, if you are a golf player like Tiger Wood, if you are a soccer player like Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, if you are mood, you are a speech speaker like Obama, you keep being called for a speech, come give us a, a, no, a keynote speaker speech. If you are, you are an orator and a speaker like uh, Patrice Rumumba from Kenya, Professor Ma Patrice Rumumba, he moved he move all over the world, told, give us keynote. And every keynote, he earned millions of money in every keynote. That Dr. Miles Molo was saying, the late Dr. Miles Molo, that when you work in the area of your gifting and talent, the money will come to look for you. You're not going to look for money. A fact we see in mighty anointed pastor, mighty talented people like Ronaldo, um, Novak Djokovic in tennis, R Ronaldo, in footy, uh, in, 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 in soccer, we see uh, Tiger Wood in golf, we see mighty pastor full of people supporting uh, in their church. They earn from that church. Jesus said when he sent 72 disciples, wherever you go to preach, eat there. When he was sending 72 disciples to preach, don't carry food, you'll be, you'll be given food wherever you go. Because when you work in area of your time and money come to you, that you see mighty ter ter evangelist, pastor, bishop, they get money from, they work 24-7 teaching, but they are paid offering and eat from there. This is the word of God. It's when you know you will not commit suicide because of life problem. Because you know it is a pathway of new learning. It's a pathway to growth and maturity. That when it comes to Mali, you will play until you get your right person, until you hear the still voice of God. 
that even if your marriage fail, you know it's a pathway to new to new learning. It's a pathway to mature. It's an opportunity for me to train people and teach people out of my problem I went through in marriage. So the Bible saying James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4, it is when you go through issue, you mature. You are called for ministry. They make you mature to a level you can speak, you can teach, you can be anointed man of God to teach out of life experience that Jesus called people whom he qualified. Jesus called those he qualified. Jesus qualified whom he called. Jesus does not call the qualified. He called you, then he qualified you. He let you go through the issue to prepare you for the mission ahead. So many people have ended up in long careers in life not knowing that you need to work in the area of your talent. Even if it's not a lot of money, work in that area. That's what will give you happiness. But people say, I will study engineering because there's a lot of money. I'll do nothing because I can get citizens of a country easily. Then they are bored at work. They are never happy because they chose nursing because they can get the citizen. They chose doctor because I has a lot of money, but not in the area of their talent. During my university selection choice of subject, we are told by our leader of curriculum that I will make everyone to do what he got A. Because for Kenya to develop, I come from Kenya, for Kenya to develop, we must let the, the student who are pursuing bachelor degree and master and PhD to work in area they do better. I, we cannot do something you got C and leave A. You must start the career you got A. That's what we are told. And which is true. Because that's how you are given that talent to build, to encourage, to collect people using that talent. It's when you use your talent to build people, to collect people, to encourage people, to construct people, to rebuke people, to show people the right way using your talent, to motivate, to encourage people. If you have, that you feel happy and rewarding, that it is when you spend time using your singing talent to, to encourage somebody there about to take poison, you feel happy. To, to encourage somebody with the word of God, you feel happy. And you feel life is fulfilling and happy. People end up not becoming what they are supposed to be if a doctor, nurse, teacher, pastor, pianist, keyboardist. People end up not being career they were given by God because of not knowing. They waste their time in class. They don't listen to the teacher. They don't listen to the, they don't do homework. They don't do the work. Students at school, they fail to achieve the area they were meant to work in because they don't know that school is a kitchen to, to, to it's, it's a kitchen put there to cook me until I find which is my best area. They don't know that school gives them many options, many trials, many exploration time. They don't know that school is an institution of exploring yourself. They don't put use their time well. It's because students don't know they're in school to explore themselves. They don't know they're in school to star their gift. Many they don't know they're in school to star their talent to discover, to seek, which is their talent. Many don't know they're in school. They are given many options to try. They are in experiment. They don't know they're in school as an experimental lab. They don't know school is an experimental lab to experiment themselves. They don't know school is an exploration center to explore themselves. They don't know school is a discovery center to discover themselves. They don't know the school and institution. There is a kitchen to cook them, to know which is the best food they are. They don't know the school is an exploration center to explore themselves, to know, am I a nurse, am I a teacher, am I a professor, am I a doctor, am I a motivation speaker, am I a teacher, am I a chemistry teacher, am I a, a, a pastor, am I a speech, um, uh, am I a speech orator, am I a speech giver, am I a motivation speaker. They don't know they're in school to know, am I a pilot, am I have a gift with the children, a gift to encourage people, I have a gift to connect things. I have a gift of to work with my hand. They don't know, so they don't do homework. 
They don't listen to the teacher. They fail to do homework. They fail to listen to the teacher. Then many people have died with an undeveloped talent. Many people have died with an undeveloped gift. Many people went, have become old without knowing they were meant to be teachers. Many people have become old. They can't work anymore not knowing they were made to be doctor, to save life in hospital. Because of not knowing. So they didn't, they didn't know that I need to use time more. I need to listen to the teacher. I need to work hard. Jesus said the kingdom of God is like someone looking for a precious something on the field. Looking for a precious silver on a farm. Kingdom of God. You must keep searching. To get the citizen of heaven, you must keep living holy. Playing, playing, like seeking for gold. That to kingdom of God is like mining gold. You mine, you dig the ground until you get the gold. Gold is heaven. The same is school. People don't know school is like, like the same parable of the lost treasure. You are looking at treasure. A treasure is who you are. Keep looking until you know who you are. Am I a chemistry teacher? Am I a pianist? Every school has music. Every school has chemistry, has science, has math, has a time to speak to the assembly, to the people, a time to sing. You know who you are. They don't get to know, discover the precious silver lost in the farm to know who they are. So Bible says in Revelation 12, 9, many will end up in hell because of not knowing. So Satan will take advantage, Revelation 12, 9, of them not knowing to cheat the whole world. The whole world will worship the beast. The beast, while they say it's a one person, Antichrist, it can also mean the system. Others, as we speak in a matter of fact, how many people are worshipping internet? How many people are worshipping TikTok, Facebook, WhatsApp, technology? That uh, when they say worshipping, we mean they, their mainstay, their 24 time they use is on the game, is on TikTok. They don't spend time seeking God, doing what they are supposed to do to achieve their goal. That all worship the beast. It can be this system like digital beast. Daniel saw beast. They were system. The last beast was Roman Empire beast. We had the Indo-Persian Empire. We had the Babylonian Empire. They were a mighty kingdom. They were called beast. That all inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. How many people are worshiping this digital beast? It's because of not knowing. Then they need to keep their former love of God and worship, worshiping God. So we finish by saying conclusion one, for the joy set before Jesus. Because Jesus knew that the knowledge of the truth that is because of what I'm about to be, I'm being attacked. He persevered and won and became the king of kings. Conclusion two. Conclusion two, we finish by saying, conclusion two, it says that um, God sealed us. When you live holy, God seal you. And it says it's God, Second uh, Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21 to 22 say, for it's God who make us stand firm. If you know it's God who make us stand firm, you will win. Not, not your spouse, not your, not your people. It's God who make us stand firm and he anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us. This is NIV Bible 2011. He set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our heart as a deposit guaranteeing us what is to come so our point here at conclusion two is that knowing that when you live with the spirit of god you can see ahead that he god keep put his spirit in us showing us ahead guaranteeing us things to come guaranteeing us what to come is when you have the spirit of god you see if i give you my spirit you see what i see when you have the Spirit of God, we can see the way God sees. God is all knowing. God is all seeing. When you have the Spirit of God, we can be having that Spirit nature of God to see, to know. Also spoken in Proverbs 9 10. When we fear God, the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. Conclusion 3. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The fear here is to obey, to live holy, to do right things. When you fear God, you start having wisdom. Wisdom is not wisdom of intelligence of man. It's wisdom to know the truth, what you should do according to God's will. The fear of God, living holy, doing the right thing, obeying God, you have wisdom to know, insight to know 
the will of God in your life and to win the battle. Daniel 9, 24, Revelation 7, 13 to 14, Revelation 22, 14, they are talking the same thing, that those who know there is a set time to clean up. In fact, they will be sealed as holy people. They will clean up, live the right way. Clean up means live the right way. They wash their robe. They wash their robe means they live the way God expected them to be in their marriage, in their family, in the children learning, in, the, in the, their time devotion with God, in their way, work of God themselves, in their mind, in their heart, what they do in secular, what they do when they are alone, what they do, how they handle salvation, living holy. That is conclusion. Adri is still continuing talking about is when we live holy, that fearing God, we know what you expected to do according to the will of God. That Matthew, Daniel 9, 24 say, there is a set time limit to stop sinning and live like. Those who know that, that he say uh, that when you read Daniel, I don't know whether I had uh, put it here. Daniel 9, 24 says, Daniel 9, 24, Revy Bible 2011 says, there is a set 77 they are a decree for your people and your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin and to atone for wickedness. To atone is to stop doing wrong things, to atone for weakness, wickedness. That 77 are decree for your people or in your holy city to finish transgression. Those, there's a time need to stop sinning, to finish doing wrong things and to put an end to sin to, and to atone for wickedness. To bring in an everlasting righteousness, to live like holy, to live holy from now henceforth, to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy place. And also, which is, uh, we are reading uh, in conjunction with that is Revelation 7, 14 and Revelation 22, 14 is talking about these people who knew we are expected to clean up and we clean up through trials, tribulation. Martin Luther Told those people who are selling holiness that he told them, uh, I think Act 22 14, I think uh, he told them that uh, it is by tribulation we are clean up and made holy. We buy holy, we get holy through trials. We pray and pray when we are going through tough times and we are made holy. Paul was told is when you are tormented by the people of darkness, he was, he was saying, Remove this certain person. It's when they torment you, you pray more and you come close to me and you live holy. So, uh, Revelation 7 13 to 14. John was asking, or somebody was asking, who are these people with white color, white clothes? He was told these are the people who accepted to live holy. They went through great tribulation. They washed their robe and made them white as white in the blood of the Lamb. It is Jesus' blood that clean us and make holy. And I read and I quote Revelation 7, 13 to 14, NIV Bible 2011, and it says, Then one of the elders asked me, This in white robe, who are they and where did they come from? And I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robe and made them as white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation uh, 22, 14 say, Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have light of the tree of life and may go through the gate into the city. The gate is Jesus. The Bible says in, in John 10, that John 10, we can read here, John 10, I think verse, John 10, NIV Bible 2011, John 10, Jesus is the gate that those who wash their clothes, that mean those who live holy in an in area, every kind of life, they will enter the city through the gate. They will enter the city through the gate. The gate is Jesus. The gate is Jesus. So, the gate is Jesus, and I read uh, Prova, um, um, John 10, uh, 10 9. Say, John chapter 10, verse 9, NIV Bible 2011. I am the gate, whoever enter through me will be saved. They will come in, in and out and find pasture. So, Jesus is the gate. Revelation 22 14 is saying that blessed are those who wash their robe, wash their clothes, wash their linen, wash their. 
what they are wearing. That means they live holy in every area of life. In their heart, they are clean. In their mind, they are clean. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3, after knowing everything will be destroyed, there will be hellfire. What do you need to do to live holy, spotless, in every area of life, at work, in family, in what we are doing when you are alone, what you are conspiring for others. Our mind is pure, our heart is pure, our concerns is pure, what you are planning is pure, what we do doing is pure. We want to live holy. We thus for righteousness. We have thus to live holy. That when you thus for righteousness, God will protect you and deliver you. The Bible says in Revelation 3, 7 to 8, you of little strength, you of little strength, I will open a door, no one will close it. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, 51, Isaiah 51, from verse 1 there to 2, that you woman who want to live holy, you want to live holy, but you are being stopped from living holy. The Bible says in I think Matthew chapter 5 that those who hunger for righteousness shall be filled. Touch a copy from USA saying, Fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. You provide the fire, I provide the sacrifice. Fill me up. Matthew 5, at this Matthew 5 or 6, he say beatitude. When he was talking on the mount, the beatitude. He say, uh, Matthew 5 10, blessed are those who persecute them because of righteousness, for there is the kingdom. No, not that one. It says, uh, um, uh, who hunger. There's one that says, uh, Matthew 5 6, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, blessed are those who hunger. NIV Bible 2011, Matthew 5 6, blessed are those who hunger and thus for righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you thus to live holy, if you want to live holy, even if you are being stopped, like Joseph, like Daniel, like Jesus, like the Jews. You want to live holy, you want to do light, but you are being stopped like Nehemiah. You want to go do things the right way, like Elijah, like Daniel, like Nehemiah. You will be delivered. The Bible says in Isaiah 51, Isaiah 51, this woman is a church of God. You want to live holy, but he's being stopped. All his children were on the street. They told, the, the children of this woman told this woman, sleep. We walk on you like a land. Sleep like a, we walk on you on your back. The woman of Isaiah 51. You want to live holy but you are being stopped. The woman. Isaiah 51 is talking everlasting salvation for Zion. And I read Isaiah 51, NIV Bible 2011, verse 1. Listen to me who you pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the Lord from where you are cut. And the quarry from which you are win. This is the church of God. When you read the last verse of Isaiah 51, Isaiah 51, 53, Isaiah 51, verse 23, Isaiah 51, verse 23, it says, I will put in the hand of your tormentor who said to you, Fall for prostrate, fall prostrate, fall prostrate that we may walk on you. And you made your back like a ground, like a street to be walk on. When you read also the same chapter, it says the children, the children of this woman were on the street. None was there to help the woman. Verse 17 of Isaiah 51. NIV Bible 27. Awake, awake, arise up Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the holy church of God. You, you who is drunk from the hand of the Lord, the cup of the Lord, who are dry, drained into dregs and grubbers that make you stagger. Among all the children you bore, there was none to guide you. Among all the children you reared, there was none to take you by hand. Verse 20 says, your children have fainted. They lie at every street corner. The antelope cut caught in a net. Like an antelope caught in a net. I read that again, Isaiah 51, 20. You children, your children, you woman, have fainted. They lie at every street corner, like antrop caught in a net. They are filled with the Lord of the Lord, with the rebuke of your God. The children of this woman, none was there to help her. What are we saying? What is the point here? What, is we, what are we trying to say? That if you want to live holy, Matthew 5, 6, Matthew 5, 6, that blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You have desired to live holy, hunger and thirst for righteousness. 
when you need to drink water, you feel that. Where can I get water? Jesus said, John 4 20, 14. John 4 14. If you take my water, you will never last. Until you go to, until up all the way to heaven. So, Matthew 5 6, those who want to hunger for that for righteousness, they will be filled. When you read in Isaiah 51, the woman want to live, want to pursue righteousness, but was cut off from a belong. Remember the desolation of the church. Remember the destruction of the church. Here it is speaking about the destruction of the church. Jesus predicted Matthew 24, Luke 21, the destruction of the church. The church destruction in the last days. The church want to live holy. They want to live for Christ. But they are being stopped. Jesus said, I will deliver you. When you read Isaiah 51, let's finish by saying Isaiah 51. Why? When you live holy, you will be protected. Also, Revelation, before I read Isaiah 51, we did Revelation 3. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation 3, it says, Revelation 3, verse 7, it says, uh, verse 7, um, verse 7 be, these are the word of him who is holy and true. That's Jesus, who's, who, the, who holds the key of David. David, what he opened, no one can shut, and what he shut, no one can open. I know you are deep, that's the church of Philadelphia, the true church of God. I have praised you before, uh, I know you are deep. See, I've placed you an open door that no one will shut. I know that you have little strength. Yet you have kept my word and you have not denied my name. You see, the church of God, the true church, if a, why is it of little strength? It's because of the attack. Remember Paul in the Bible, you say, I am feeling weak being attacked by Satan person living with me. But Paul was delivered. Isaiah 51 is saying the same. The woman is of little strength. You want to pursue righteousness, but you are being stopped. You are cut off. You are removed from you belong. But God protected the woman. We read, we read from verse 2 as we finish. Let me see if there is another verse remaining. No, there is one other. So we finish by Isaiah 51. It says from verse 2, Look to Abraham, your father, to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called you, I called him, he was only one man. I blessed him with with him and made I blessed him and I made him many. Verse 3 of Isaiah 51. The Lord will surely comfort Zion. That's the church of God. And will look with compassion all her wings. He will make her desert like Eden. Eden is full of green. So you are made dry. You will be made to have life. Desert is you are made dry without the word of God. Eden, you have life, revival, anointing, calling. Holiness, happiness, joy. And you see it as we go. You hear the joy. So you are you are like desert, dry, like dry bone. You have life like Eden. You are wasted like the garden of the Lord. You have been made waste. You will be made garden of the Lord. Also spoken in Revelation 22. Joy and gladness will be found on her. That is the woman. If you thus for righteousness, you are a woman of God. Who is pursuing righteousness, but you are being cut off, prevented from living holy from your God. You are too taken away from your God. That if you ask for righteousness, joy and grandness will be found on you. Thus giving and the sound of singing will be heard from you. Verse 4. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become light, light to the nation. Justice will come on you if you want to live holy and you're being stopped. Verse 5. My righteousness, my righteousness, draw near speedily. My salvation is on the way. And my arm will bring justice to the nation. The iron will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift, verse 6, Isaiah 51, 6. Lift up your eyes to the heaven. Look at the earth beneath. The earth will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear like garment and a inhabitant die like fry but salvation will last forever my righteousness will never fail verse 7 hear me who want hear hear me you who know what is right you know you people who have taken instruction to the heart do not fear the reproach of mere mortal men be nor be terrified by the insult 
for the moth will eat them like the garment, like a garment. The worm will devour them like wool. My righteousness, but my righteousness will last forever. My salvation through all generations. Verse 9, Isaiah 59, 51, 9. Awake, awake, arm of the Lord, clothe yourself with strength. Awake, awake, arm of the Lord. Clothe yourself with strength. Awake in, as in the days gone by. As generation of the old, was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces? Who pies the, that monster through? Verse 10. What is not... What was it not you that is God? Was it not God who dry up the Red Sea, the water of the great deep? Who made was it not God who made a road in the deep Red Sea so that the redeemed might cross over? Isaiah 51 11. Those the Lord has rescued will return, they will enter Zion with singing, everlasting joy will crown their hearts. Head. Gladness and joy will overtake them. The sorrow and sigh will flee away. Verse 12. I, even I am who comfort you, who so I verse 12, Isaiah 51 12. I, even I, I am he who comfort you. Who are you that you fear mere mortal men, human beings who are but grass? that you forget the Lord your maker who stretches out the heaven and who raise the foundation of the earth that you live in constant terror every day because of the Lord of your oppressor who is bent on destruction Satan is bent on destruction we should not fear Satan it's a scare people under Satan power they are bent on destruction unless they repent we should not fear satanic people possess people Bible say in Luke 21 the Gentile the non-believer, people who do not know God, people who are blinded and cheated by Satan, will try to step on, they will step on Christian at their time. There will be a time for Gentiles to step on Christian. The Bible says in Isaiah 51, 13, don't fear people who have certain power and Satan is bent on destruction. Satan is our oppressor. Anyone oppressing you is Satan in them. Satan is the oppressor. He is bent on destruction. The Bible says, don't fear. Because Satan will finish in Revelation 20. I think verse 9 to 10, he's in hellfire. He's bent on destruction. He's going nowhere. Don't fear. For Isaiah 51, 13 continues to say, For where is the Lord of the oppressed? The cowering prisoner soon will be set free. They will not die in their hole or dungeon. Nor they lack blood. Isaiah 51, 15. For I am the Lord, you our God. For I am the Lord, your God, who stir up the sea so that its water lower. The Lord Almighty is his name. Verse 16, Isaiah 51, 16. I put my words in your mouth and covered you with my shadow of my hand. I who set, I who set the heaven in praise. Who laid the foundation of the earth? And who say to Zion, You are my people. Remember Joel chapter 2. Say, you will know I am your God. I will restore you. Your vat will be full of food. I will anoint you. I will put my spirit on you. I will deliver you. I will bring you the former lane. I will bring you the latter lane. I will bless you. I will anoint you. I will restore you back. Until you know you are my people. We have belonged to God. That if we pursue righteousness, we will be filled, we will be protected, we will be covered. Isaiah 4, 5 to 6, maximum cover. Isaiah 49, maximum cover. Isaiah 11, maximum cover. Isaiah, Psalm 91, maximum cover of God and protection. Isaiah 20, uh, Psalm 121, maximum protection of God. Isaiah 11, maximum cover of God. The emblem of Jesus Shelter YouTube channel, which is bringing you this inspiration message, is Isaiah 4, 5 to 6. It speaks of maximum cover of God. That is like an umbrella, like a hiding place, like a shade, a cover, a house, a shelter, a hiding place. In time of difficulty, in all time, this is the word of God. May you be blessed as you purpose to live holy and know that when you know you will win.
is knowing that will make us win. You will win if you know. Proverbs 9 10. When you fear God, live holy, you will know. And you never miss heaven. You never feel in life. May you be blessed as you purpose to seek God, live holy to know, so you can win both life on earth and also enter heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.